one that you would have to live within the members of my body to understand. So much so that it got to a point I returned to Ghana from uh, studying in the UK, looking for a job at uh, the media houses that I wanted to work with in Ghana and nobody was ready to give me a job. And that's just because of the stigma that surrounds uh, my community. So this is going to be the very first time that I'm using your medium to say that not only am I an activist for the rights of um, Africa's sexual minorities, what you will call the LGBTQI community, but I am gay. It is a truth that I've accepted and it is a truth that I live by. And so just to answer your question, because I was outed as a gay person, and obviously I denied it because I was afraid of losing my job. I was working at an incredible television station in a car, and also for the fear of what would happen to me personally. Um, I can share stories about people that have been attacked just because they are seen to be a particular way, and I didn't want that to happen to me. So uh, I would also want to use your medium to say and apologize to the people that my community that I've let down over the years simply because I didn't have the courage to own my truth and live it as somebody who was, uh, you know, uh, in, in the media. Ignatius, but so how does it feel like uh, being in the midst of all the public anger towards your sexuality? It's, it's, um, it's very sad. It doesn't feel okay. Uh, I'm speaking to you right now and I can't even feel the fear and the anxiety within my heart. That's, that's, that's the feeling for LGBTQI people because you're not allowed to openly say who you are or even love on who you want to love on or have that kind of love reverted to you as well. So it doesn't feel okay. It doesn't feel like, you know, uh, I'm a human being who deserves uh, the right to employment, the right to education, and literally the basic right to uh, be able to walk, drive around, go to wherever that I want to go to in Ghana as an openly gay man. It doesn't feel okay. It feels dehumanizing and awful. So what do you hope should happen in Ghana's contest? You know, what my community is asking for is the opportunity to love like, you know, all humanity love, well, particularly in the case of Ghana, heterosexuals. The privilege that heterosexuals have, that you cannot, you know, out yourself to say you're gay and be allowed to live. My hope is that what I call draconian laws that have been passed down by colonizers, which gradually, you know, uh, well, in the West, we all know those, those, those laws do no longer exist. Those laws will be scrapped out of the books of the Republic of Ghana so that people like myself who uh, have life, who work, contribute to the socioeconomic fiber of the Republic of Ghana, but be accepted as human beings deserving of respect, kindness, and dignity. But uh, I want Ghanaians to have an honest conversation about people who live in your family, people who are your brothers, are your sisters, are your uncles, are your cousins. Like myself, I do have family in Ghana, that you will see that these are human beings that deserve to have the very life that you have and be able to be free and go about their normal activities. How like does you your do. family feel about this, um, Ignatius? Well, um, you know, 2017, when I came back to Ghana from studying, I had a burning desire to um, tell my truth. And I thought I needed to speak to my mother about it, first of all, because she's my only surviving parent. And what is funny is that she looked me in the eye and said to me, just because according to her at the time, this is January the 30th telling me that, oh, just yesterday she was listening to a preacher on the radio talking about how demonic it is to be a man and have love for your fellow man or be a woman and have love for your fellow woman. And so she was going to pray to cast that demon away from me. And to hear 
that from my mother was very painful, but then I give grace because I understand, you know, the context. I understand where she was coming from. That's not her idea. It is what has repeatedly been fed into the minds and ultimately the hearts of people. So my mom, even three years ago, was not accepting of it and told me that I remember the following day she came back to me to say, I have not been able to sleep because of what you've told me. And I could feel her pain because she thought I was going to put my life in danger. A TV person and being suspected of being gay, but not openly saying it. And I remember telling her, she should forget I said that to her. And I said that so that she could have the peace that she needs. But, you know, at 32 years old today, I've lived a, a life of lie. I've lived a double life. And no human being deserves to do that. And to have accepted that truth and lived the freedom that I live today. Mm -hmm. I'm, very, I'm a very content person today. And, and, and your mother, your mother, your mother has come to terms with that, right? I will, not, I will not say that because, like I told you, in 2017 when I, I told her, uh, she said she was going to pray for me and I told her that she should forget I ever had this conversation and we've never spoken about it about again. Life is gone.